Well, I saw again how um, the Spirit worked today and tying so many things together. It always happens that way. <laughs> and uh, you just know then that, you know, He's working among us because the things are all familiar that you're already planning to say. And I added a little more of what I heard this morning. And so that, that's just evidence that, uh, like I say, that he's working among us. I wanted to talk about, and I just couldn't think of just how to summarize it. So there's several ways of saying this. It's um, talking about being alive to God, walking in the spirit, staying sensitive, remaining faithful. There's just so many ways to say it. And I wanted to, to make the point from in which we touched on all those things this morning. But I wanted to talk about how we, um, first of all, believe that we can do this, that God has not given provision. Yeah. Um, he didn't ask us to do it and then not provide a way right. for us to make this. It is possible. It's realistic, pos realistically possible. And I think so many believers do not really have that, you know, firm belief in it and assurance of that, that that is true. And also these things are only possible with faith. We want to establish that as well. But uh, just, just to talk about that these things can be accomplished, and this, this is our goal. That's what I wanted to talk about, because it's an ongoing thing. It's not a, a one-time thing. I think that was mentioned this morning also, of course. We don't, not, we're just we're in, and then we've made it, and we can relax and rest. It's not that way at all. And uh, so there's many, many things that God has provided and put into, set into motion, uh, has in the Scripture for us, that will help us. Uh, we just need to be aware of them and know them. And I just want to talk about a few tonight, just to get to thinking about that and, and uh, get the, the thoughts going here. Um, I thought of the, the verse where, uh, in Luke 10 where Jesus was talking about um, loving the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. First of all, I wanted to read that. And I'm in the wrong one here. A lawyer stood up and put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? How does it read to you? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. And that's what we're talking about here is life. We, we, want, we don't want to die on the vine. We want to be alive to God. So there, there it was summarized for us. And then you think, when you think about this, if this is actually what you're doing, that you're loving God uh, to this extent and your neighbor, how can you sin? How can you do anything against God or your neighbor? Either one. So he's, you know, he's set this very basic thing, you know, in motion to, to uh, start off with right off the bat here. Uh, and the, the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, one of them says, Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now, concluding that if you don't hunger and thirst, you're not going to be filled. And if you're not filled, then you're not going to be sensitive to God, and that, that sensitivity is going to, to wane. So you're going to be empty. Other things are going to come in and replace that, that which you should be filled with. Mm -hmm. So see, he's, he's just made every provision in every, in every way if we just follow his leading and what he has told us to do. <coughs> Uh, being sensitive or alive in the spirit means responding to God's words. So it's not just hearing them only, like coming to the, to the meetings and fellowship and hearing his, the sermons and his teaching or even reading them. Um, he illustrates this in his parable, Jesus did, of the uh, wise man and the foolish man. And you're all familiar with that. I just wanted to point out one part of that little parable. He says here, everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them I will show you what he is like. So acting on him is what I wanted to point it out. I, acting on them, not just hearing them, but he have yeah, to act yeah. on them. Yeah. And then this is what you'll be like if, if you act on them. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when a flood occurred and torrent burst against the house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who has heard and not acted accordingly is like a man who has built a house on the ground without any foundation. And the torrent burst against it and immediately it collapses. So there's the... Uh, difference there, the comparison of what you do if you've actually done what Jesus has, has told you to do. It's a huge difference. It's just a huge difference whether you're going to uh, stand or not at all. Uh, when Jesus told the, de the devil when he tempted him with turning the, the stones into bread, you remember? Yeah. He told him, man shall not live on bread alone. 
And the rest of that quote that's from uh, Deuteronomy says, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So there again, that's what we live by. That means life. That brings life is God's word. Mm -hmm. And without it, uh, we're going to die. It, it's, it's either the life or death is what we're talking about here. Amen. This morning it was mentioned that we need to stay on the highway of holiness. That's our safe house. That's where we're safe. We get off that path and we're just pray for the enemy as, as uh, Sister Ada talked about then this morning. Good. Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches, and this is another illustration of this. Now, if you would cut a branch off, or it would be broken off during a storm or something, could you get that branch to grow again, put it in water, plant it, put it in dirt? Nothing would happen to it, would it? Because it's disconnected from yeah. its source mm -hmm. of life, and so it's going to die, and it's not going to be good for anything anymore because of its separation. And that's exactly what he teaches us through this illustration mm -hmm. in this parable of the, the vine and the branches. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. So the alternative to not abiding in him yeah. is to be thrown away and burned, burned up Amen. in the fire. And so that's pretty extreme opposites there also, huh? Just, uh, just life and death again. Uh, when Jesus was praying for the disciples in John 17 there, he prayed that uh, he told the Father he had kept his disciples, yeah. guarding them, and he had kept them. Amen. He says, while I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me, and I guarded them, and not one of them perished except the son of perdition. And we know who that is. So do you think that Judas was walking in the spirit or was sensitive to the Lord during that last part of the time, with, even with the 12 there, when he was dipping into the treasury? Of course not. He wasn't. He was not. He was, had disconnected at some point, hadn't he? So this is what happened to him when, when he became disconnected, um, which tells us that you, know, you, don't, you don't get those blessings. You don't get that protection, the guarding that he's talking about, or you aren't kept if you don't stay in Christ. Amen. And uh, so th the other competing things will come in, and that's what happened to, to Judas. You know, It was the greed, of course. We know the money for him could be anything, of course, but um, he perished as a result of it. He perished. So th this is, is it a, another example that God teaches us with. The uh, passage in Second Peter has many things to stay, say about how we actually do uh, do this and, and keep from falling away. Mm -hmm. There's several you know, individual things. Um, I want to read it first, and then I want to give you the counter part of what it would be like if you don't do this, just the opposite. He says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. Now for this very reason also, applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence, knowledge, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness, and in your brotherly kindness, love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I just want to just do the flip side of those and say, if you don't do this, this will be the result. Immoral conduct, yeah. ignorance, ignorance I'm sorry, or lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. permissiveness and impulsiveness, ungodliness, mm -hmm. hatefulness and hating, mm -hmm. undisciplined living and slothfulness. You'll be blind, short-sighted and forgetting your purification from sin yeah. that Jesus did for you. Yeah. Amen. So we look at the, the two sides, the alternative, you know, the, uh, the, the other side of what's going what's to happen to us if we don't listen to God's words, that he has, like I say, he's laid this all out for us. He's already provided mm -hmm. uh, the power with which to do this and told us he hasn't kept us in the dark or kept us guessing. That's right. um, it's all there for us, and, and just abundant <coughs> life is offered if we will just do and follow what he has said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, it was said this morning, it says, if you don't forsake all, you cannot be my disciple. 
And like I say, it's just it's said over and over in many different ways. I think Jesus used so many different examples and spoke so clearly that we, you know, if we want to know, these things are there Amen. to show us the way. So I want to, to uh, just close with the last two verses in that same chapter of Peter. He says, Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make, your, to make certain about his calling and choosing you, for as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. For in this way, the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be abundantly supplied to you. So there's the promise. So I just wanted to encourage you with those words. I know that you're all familiar with those, but we have to be reminded in these uh, earthly, earthly bodies, earthly temples for the time while we're here. So, okay, I'll go ahead and open us with a word of prayer tonight then.